Hi, I'm Pacific Northwest author Cindy Heide, writing in the spirit of adventure and happy endings. I'm thrilled to announce the release of my romance adventure, I Did Rod Nights, April 14, 2020, from Ooligan Press. I'll begin with a little background. Years ago, I read a newspaper article about a local woman, a lawyer, who went to Alaska to watch the I Did Rod Trail sled dog race. She fell in love with the sport and put her career on hold to train and compete. Her real life story um, became the premise for I Did Rod Nights. This is from the back cover. Claire Stanfield became a lawyer to make her father proud, but after a troubling case leaves her shaken, she escapes to Alaska and immerses herself in the world of dog sledding. Dylan Cord became a police officer to serve his community, but he moves to Nome in the wake of a life-altering incident. For both, the Iditarod, the toughest sled dog race in the world, offers a chance for forgiveness, redemption, and healing. I initially submitted this story idea to a New York publishing house, and it was rejected. One criticism was that the heroine was too strong. So I attempted to revise the story and make Claire softer. And I ended up with something I hated. New York editors didn't like it either. So I shoved the unfinished manuscript under my desk where it collected dust for several years. Eventually though, I did pull the manuscript back out, writing the story the way I wanted to tell it, and self-published in 2014. Multnomah County Library featured the ebook from their Library Writers Project, where it did so well that it captured the attention of Ooligan Press. So I signed up to be an Ooligan Hooligan. And it's a decision I have not um, regretted at all. The support and guidance from the Ooligan team has been awesome. The experience helped me grow as an author. And honestly, I feel this second edition is a much better story as a result. That said, I'd like to share the opening. Chapter 1 What do you mean he's not coming? Claire asked. The bitter smell of stale coffee assaulted her sinuses as she unzipped her parka in the heat of the cramped air taxi office. It was bad enough she'd been coerced by her matchmaker friend into driving to Talkeetna to pick up some man she'd never met. She didn't need complications. I saw animal carriers being unloaded when I pulled in. Weren't his, George the whip-thin 60-year-old flight service owner replied. His office chair gave a rusty squawk as he leaned across his desk and handed Claire a slip of yellow note paper. Got the call about 10 minutes ago. Some of his dogs came down with kennel cough. Oh. Claire's irritation gave way to concern. The canine malady was a highly contagious respiratory infection that could develop into pneumonia if not properly treated. She glanced at the note. Antibiotics and rest. Tell Matt and Janie I'll see them next year. He apologized for not getting word to you sooner, George said. Guess he was hoping the dogs would pull out of it in time to make the trip. He must be terribly disappointed. Claire had put her career on hold for two years to train and qualify for the I Did Rod. To have to withdraw ten days before the race would be heartbreaking. But the Alaskan bush was no place for a sick dog. She shoved the note into the pocket of her parka. Well then, I suppose that's... The office door blew open, cutting her off. A surge of frigid... Alaskan air entered on the heels of a tall figure in a forest green parka, and moosehide mucklucks laced up to the knees of his faded jeans. His dark brown hair swept back from his face untamed. As he moved away from the door, his eyes, as clear blue as glacier ice, surveyed the small room, cataloging his surroundings. A learned habit Claire had seen before. Law enforcement would be her guess. Her gaze, his gaze settled on her, and an unexpected rush of heat prickled the skin beneath her thick flannel shirt. 
George asked, can I help you? Those intense eyes held Claire's a second longer, then shifted to George. I'm looking for Ted Warren, he said, a raw huskiness in his voice. You just get off the plane from Nome, George asked. That's right. The older man referred to another slip of paper. You must be Dylan Cord. Yes. George shoved his knit cap higher on his forehead, exposing a thick shock of white hair. I'm afraid Ted won't be showing. He's in intensive care at Providence Hospital down in Anchorage. Claire drew a sharp breath. Ted and Sarah Warren were her neighbors. What happened? Heart attack late last night, George replied. His wife just called a bit ago from the hospital. What's his condition? He's stabilized. That's all Sarah could tell me. George returned his attention to Dylan Cord. You a friend of Ted's? No, somebody I know put me in touch with him. I had arrangements to board my team at his place until the race. Those were your dogs I saw being unloaded, Claire said. Yes, ma'am. Fatigue pulled at the lines around his mouth. Would either of you know where I can put up 16 dogs? Claire didn't waste time analyzing the feeling that some force beyond her control had taken charge of the moment. I was supposed to pick up a musher and his team from Teller, she said, but I just got word he won't be coming. The vacancy is yours if you want it. She could have called Janie and Matt first, but she knew her friends well enough to have a good idea what they'd say. It helped that Ted and Sarah had been willing to take the other man in. But Claire relied on her intuition more than anything else. After seven years in criminal defense, she considered herself an accurate judge of character. Except when it comes to my personal life, she thought bitterly. George leaned back, causing his chair to shriek again. Well, Mr. Cord, looks like this is your lucky day. Matt and Janie Summer run a top-notch operation, and they're only a couple miles down the road. Claire here's been training at their kennel. She'll be a rookie in this year's race. Are you sure I won't be imposing? Claire gave a wry smile. The musher she'd been sent to meet, according to Janie, was 37, good-looking, and single. Dylan Cord appeared to be in the same age group, maybe a couple years younger, and, in her opinion, he met the second criterion. She wasn't going to ask about the third. My friends are expecting me to bring back a musher and his dog, she told him. You'll be asked to help with chores and contribute a little for groceries, but the bunk in the cookhouse is free. Of course, you're responsible for your own dog's chow. In that case, I accept, he said, and smiled. Claire's breath caught. Maybe this isn't such a good idea, she thought. But the sensation didn't last long. She was more than capable of guarding her heart against a man's attractive smile. She'd had two years of practice. To find out more, please visit my website, cindyhyday.com. Um, where you'll find description details, reviews on this book and my other titles, along with buy buttons. And there are links to the social networks I'm on. I'd love to hear from you, connect with you. Thank you for listening. Please stay safe and stay healthy.